Hello soulmates, welcome to another interesting tutorial from the Honest Passion Academy. My name is Justice. So in this video, we're going to be um, understanding the table of measurement and proportion, average measurement and proportions. So on page 16, if you have the textbook, that's where you'll find the table of average measurement and proportion. And in case you don't have the textbook, Okay, I think I've sent it to the group. So you do well to download it and um, learn from it as we go on with this. On page 16. Meanwhile, this is an calibrated book and if you have it, do well to study it and learn it. Especially if you understand your English very well. It's a very wonderful book and you're going to learn a lot from it. So looking at this table of average measurements and proportions, we have two columns. This is column one and this is column two. On this column one, we have measurements. And on column two, we have proportions. Okay, I hope you can see this clearly. We have measurements and proportions. Now, this measurement, we might, in some cases, or in almost all the cases, it depends. If you're working for someone who is close to you, like a biscuit tailoring, you might not need this measurement here. All you have to do is to look at what is needed and get your own measurement just as we have taken. Then you might need the proportions, right? But if you are into ready to wear and you don't have your own size charts, you can take the measurements from here hoping that it fits um, people right you can use everything here the measurements and the proportions so where to use it and how to use it i think it, that's not much of a problem the problem is for us to understand what is written into or inside this table of um, measurements average measurements and proportion here we have 1 to 10 written in Roman figures, I to X, right? We have 10 um, rows. Now on this upper part, we have measurements, we have proportions. Below the measurements, we have the bust, which is the bust circumference. We have the hip circumference. We have the waist, we have the length of waist which is the measurement we took from our neck, the um, neck base to the deepest part of our waist at the back. Then we have the across back, we have across chest, we have the shoulder, and we have top arm. We did not measure the top arm because we will not be using it. Then on the proportions, we have the point O, which is, is more of um, a fixed measurement. We have the back width, back neck width, which is more of variable proportion. We have the depth of armhole, which is also a variable. We have the back UP, we have the dart and um, armhole. Okay. So on this measurement part, these are measurements that you can take from your body. This measurement, almost everything here you can take from your body, right? And replace it with what you have here. Then in the proportions, we have fixed proportions and variable proportions. Fixed proportions are things that you cannot change, measurements that you cannot change for any reason. Especially the shoulder slope, so you might not be able to change the shoulder slope if you're using this method of pattern drafting. And then we we'll have variable proportions, something like the back neck width. You can always calculate your back neck width and use. We have the depth of armhole. You can get that, what works for you or what you've been using. We have, um, you can decide to reduce the size of that here or use what is there depending on what you're working on. So on this first line, we have the bust circumference. The bust circumference here begins from size 80, that is 80 centimeter. So between 80, the next one we have 84. 
The next one we have 88. We have 92, 96, 100, 104, 108, 112, 116. You can see that the measurement jumps by 4 centimeters, right? For um, size 80, everything that is here is what you're going to be needing. If you're using this measurement, you can use everything here to draft your pattern. If you're size 84, you use everything here to draft your pattern. Size 88, the same thing. Now, between size 80 to 84, we have 80, 81, 82, 83, before you get to 84. So, these measurements that are not here, you can either use the one that is above or the one that is next to it, depending on where your measurement falls. If you have measurement of 81, 82, you can use what is in line 80 to get your measurements and the proportions as well. But I would advise if you're 83, which is very close to 84, you use the measurement for 84 and everything that is in it. Okay, so depending on where you fall in between, check the figure you have, which part is it close to. Is it close to the one above or is it close to the one under? If it's close to the one under, like we have 88, 87 is close to 88, so you use the column for the row for 88. If you're close to 84, you use the row for 84, every information that you have here, depending on what you're working, if you're going to be using this measurement. But since you're not using this measurement, well, you'll be using the proportions, so you use what you have in the proportions while you insert your own measurement. Except you're doing a ready to wear, you can decide to use everything like I've said before to work out your pattern. So the measurement part is really not an issue. You have your bust, you take your bust circumference, you have your hip circumference, you have your waist circumference, you have your weight length, that is um, the back waist length. This textbook does not recognize the front waist length because it can always be gotten once you have your back waist length. So the waist length here we're talking about is the one taken at the back. And I've shown us how to take the measurement, the length of waist at the back. We have our cross back. You saw where we took the measurements. We have our cross chest. We have our shoulder. Then we did not measure this top arm because we might not be, we don't need it. Not even we might not be needing it. We don't need it. So these are measurements that can be taken from the body, right? And we've taken our own measurements. So everything here belongs to the hip, depending on the measurements. Everything here belongs to the bust, depending on the measurements. And I've shown us the differences is um, four centimeters. So if you look at this measurements here, and you don't have your bust circumference, the bust circumference is very important here. You don't have your bust circumference here. Look for figures that are close to what you have. Figures that are close to what you have. If I have bust 97, I mean, if I have bust 99, I can decide to use bust 100. If I have bust 97, I have 96 to use. Bust 98 is in between. You can decide to use which one, depending on the figure you're working with. Okay, now for the proportions, I've mentioned this before. The measurement goes this way. So for each bust measurement, you go this way and use what you have in the row. We have our point O. When we're drafting, you understand what this point O is. That is the base, um, usually the base of the neckline at the back, right? So this is the point O for bust 84 you have 2.5 the back neck width for um, bust 84 you have 6.5 the depth of armhole for bust 84 you have 20.5 and above 
we have back up for post 84 we have 5 centimeter everything here is in centimeter we have that for bus 84 6.5 right we have the armhole for bus 84 41 we might not be using this armhole so the same applies to bus 88 the hip here is 94 the weight is 68 the weight length is um, 39.5 slash 41.5 this is dependent on the person's length some persons are longer some are shorter so the fact that you have the same post 88 with someone does not mean that your back waist length will always be the same some persons height are different that's why i mentioned that it's better we take our measurements someone might have a big post and then be very short okay big post and very short the measurements here might not apply to the person someone might have a very small bust and then very tall okay most some of the measurements here might not apply to the person so it is better you take your measurement and record it then proceed to the proportions i hope this is making clear to someone so let's go back to the proportions and understand the interval here we understand the interval to be four centimeter for each measurement you jump by four centimeter so if in case you don't have your measurement here if you're on the plus size this measurement stops at 116 centimeter so since the measurement jumps by every four centimeter so the next one should be 120 centimeter and that means you're going to be increasing everything you have here now for the point O, aside the first two measurements the first measurement we have two centimeter that is for, for bust 80 for bust 80 is around 31 inches okay so this point we have point O to be two centimeter the next one is 2.5 centimeter aside these two first small measurements the next measurement jumps on, only after two uh, measurements right like in bus 88 we have three centimeter in bus 92 we still have three centimeter now dm now in the next measurement which is for bus 96 it increased by 0 0.5 bus 100 we still have 0 0.3 um, 0 0.5 addition that is 3.5 3.5 now the next one we have 4 cm in the next one we have 4 cm before an additional 0 0.5 cm was added in the next measurement and in the next measurement so if we are on the bigger side if you are on the bigger side you are busty and you're using this proportion okay and you can't find your own proportion here for the bust here we have um 116 cm so if your bust circumference is not here you're going to increase the bust circumference by four centimeter let's say you have 120 centimeter as your bust circumference you're going to be adding 4 cm to 116 centimeter to find 120 centimeter so once you have the 120 centimeter you're also coming here to increase by 0 0.5 if your measurement is not here so after once um 116 centimeter for the last bus stop that has 0 0.5 cm as point o increase yours to 120 centimeter and you're coming here to add 0 0.5 to point o to get your point o measurement i hope that is understood then over to the back neck weight the same thing applies to the back neck weight the first two measurements has the same measurement 6.5 6.5 the next two has the same measurement 7 7 
So 0 0.5 is added after two measurements, right? We have 8 cm, 8 cm. After two measurements, we have 8.5, 8.5. So if you add 4 cm to your bus circumference, after the 8.5 cm, you're going to be having 9 cm. Okay? Now, the depth of armhole, we have 20.5, 20.5. For the first two small measurements. Then in the next one, we have 21, we have 21.5, 22, 22.5, 23, 23.5, 24, 24.5. So in the next one, you're going to be adding 0 0.5 to have 25 cm. And it continues like that 0 0.5, 0 0.5 addition. We have the back UP, we have 5 cm, 5 cm, 5 cm, right? In the first three measurements, then we have 5.5 in the next measurement. Now for this back UP, we can always work it out. We have 5, 5, 5 centimeter, then 5.5, 6, 6, 6.5, 7, 7, 7, the next one should be 7.5 and thereabouts. We can always work this out. While we're drafting on our pattern, I'm going to show us. I've done it before and it worked very well for me. So I believe it can equally work for another person. Okay, once we know where it's been inserted, we can always find a way around it. In case you don't have your measurement in here. So the armhole is not so much needed, it's just a round armhole which can come out on its own once you finish drafting. So basically the things we have here, as so most of the things that we can work out from our measurements. So you don't have to be scared of saying, is this every time I take someone's measurements, I come to the table of proportion to look for what to use. We can always draft the pattern without the table of proportion, believe me. But for the sake of this basic body, please, I need you to understand this very well so that we can use it to draft the basic bodies. So like I said, the depth of armhole is a variable. Back neck width is a variable. Um, the back UP also is a variable. So variables are things that can change. So it's either you use what is here or you change it to suit your own body. Then we have um, fixed measurements. The shoulder is a fixed measurement, right? The 0.02 and then other measurements are what we've taken already from our measurements. So I need us to use for this measurement, I need us to use exactly our body measurement. So take the measurement that I've shown you how to take and we proceed to drafting the basic bodies. If you have any question, any misunderstanding, do well to ask your questions so that we can tackle it before we move to drafting on the pattern.